This video is a more detailed look at SAP's IBP Sales and Operation Planning application brought to you by SCM Connections. In the last video we talked about sales and marketing forecast and how the demands from sales, sales managers, and marketing professionals was introduced into the data model. In today's video we're going to talk about consensus demand planning and show not only how those demands are consolidated but also the the demands from the demand planner into one final consensus demand. We'll also talk about statistical forecasting and how that's done in the tool. So here's a typical view of the data that a demand planner would use in figuring out the statistical forecast. You can see that the attributes are product family and the key figures are the actual quantity, the adjusted actual quantity, and the statistical forecast quantity. Although there would be historical data and so the statistical forecast quantity in the past would, would, would also be there, I wanted to just demonstrate you know, how statistical forecast would be more in the future and then the actual quantities would have been in the past. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to run the statistical forecast. You can run it up there from uh, the advanced settings and as you can see there's a lot of statistical forecasting methods that are available to the user and they can just basically run that directly in the tool. It's also important to note that a demand planner could be running simulations up until the heart's content but it's not until the button is actually the save button is actually clicked that the values would actually be shared amongst um, the other team members and other organizations. Now that we've maintained all of the demands from various organizations we come to this view of the data which is essentially all the demands listed in one place so you can see that the attribute is product family and customer and you can also see that the key figures are sales forecast quantity, sales manager forecast quantity, the marketing forecast quantity, promotional uh, quantity, statistical forecast quantity, and a new key figure that we haven't seen yet which is the consensus demand plan quantity. I think the primary power of this tool is the fact that all the demands are in one place and you can sit in a room and decide what are the right values and then update them right on the spot. You may have to drill into some of the data to understand where some of the numbers come from and right here I'm showing how it's easy to change a query by removing or adding attributes. And then I also ran the query just to give you an idea of performance. Although the data is relatively limited, um, you can see that it's really a pretty quick turnaround as far as the refreshing of the data. I think the power of this tool is shown here because it's balancing the ease of use of Excel that everyone's familiar with but at the same time having a data model on the back end that allows people to share the data accurately whereas before it was yeah individual spreadsheets but none of them were actually linked to each other. So now that we have the consensus demand quantity settled you can now jump into the financial side of things you can see that this particular view of the data has attributes of product family and customer ID and the key figures are sales forecast revenue, the marketing forecast revenue and the consensus demand planned revenue. Just like in all the other views it's a relatively straightforward process to actually change this query around and so in this particular case I'm going to add the consensus demand plan profit. Right now out of the box SAP configuration has the profit as a pretty basic calculation but um, behind the scenes you can create calculations uh, that would make the calculation relatively sophisticated. Since you can easily import long-range business plans it's also a simple matter to set up alerts to see where revenues are not meeting the long-term plans. So to summarize this section on consensus demand planning, you saw from the statistical forecasting perspective that there were multiple forecasting options. Um, you can run several what-if scenarios until saved or even promote them into a production environment. You can also plan at any level, so I can put the demand in at a product level and have that blow disaggregate down into the customer level, which again will be another video entirely. For consensus demand planning you saw that there were immediate updates and there were quick changes to the query and then the real key that I think people underestimate is the consolidated view across all those business functions and all those spreadsheets out there into one view. And then finally for finance you saw that the immediate impact of profitability, the flexible attributes that um, are coming in just the standard model but you can add to a customized one and then the drill down into the root causes.